helikopter, helikopter. Goes Pensacon Volume 2. Thursday night, still in Ohio, completely packed up, saying goodbye to the cats, going to my parents' house, uh, extenuating circumstances, visiting my grandmother in the hospital, and then going to crash and get some sleep because I'm leaving for Cleveland at 3 a.m. Probably not going to record anything else tonight, but just getting ready to roll. So let's get on with it. All right, it's Friday morning. Got through TSA, but running low on time. It's going good so far. Charlotte they cancel or they rescheduled because my flight here got so close to my layover they rescheduled my layover to tomorrow which isn't gonna work so I got them to transfer that <clears throat> to being a flight to Tallahassee today which is actually it's slightly out of the way but it's closer to Pensacola so and that'll have me there at noon basically still getting me to Pensacola at the same time just not being in the direct path of Pensacola that Aiden would be taking, but at this point, it is what it is. At least I'm getting there today. And that airport sushi be bussing. To our hotel and uh, it is an improvement over last year not that that was a challenge Aiden's using the facilities I've shuffled everything to where what I'm getting signed today is in the backpack um, I'm leaving my black series Anakin and my Funko Pop Yondu here until tomorrow and uh, yeah it's kind of just what's up kind of unpacked to sort out what I'm taking with me for the day gonna take these in the backpack and just a lot cleaner than last year's was let me uh, grab that I'll need that 
nice stuff. So Aiden got a new whip. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. So thankfully the head goes up there. Mint. 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 It's uh back door of hardwood floors. Yeah, no cars have hardwood floors. This thing is fire, even with a broken window. Looks fine to me. It's the first smudgy fingerprints. Yeah, we'll wipe it down. It's a Cadillac. It's a little bit bright to see the light, but it also works. It's Friday night. We got through the first day of Pensacon. Initial impressions are good for me, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Friday is the day to go. Uh, apparently. Uh, unless you want to meet Michael Rooker or Matt Lanner. Uh, correct. So, we are going to hit up a Walmart and a Target just for funsies. And from there, we're going back to Goat Lips, the best restaurant in Pensacola that we know of. Because it's the only one that we know of. That is correct. That is correct. All right, so Aiden and I have been hitting up some stores. We went through a Walmart earlier, picked up a pop stack. We went to Target, and um, I don't know if y'all have seen the Space Jam LeBron James figures, how people are stealing the heads off of them. Um, they Target took the head off of this and put it in like a spider wrap cage. <laughs> like that's it's it's ridiculous. That's, that means that this is so much more of a problem than I could have ever considered. Right. It was still good. Goatless was still good. Aiden, Goatless was good. Goatless was good. All right, guys, it's Friday night. Got back from Goat Lips. Great, and as always, when I say as always, as in last time wasn't a fluke in being good. So tomorrow, the only autographs that I am after are Michael Rooker's Yondu and Matt Lanner's Clone Wars Anakin. So those are what I'm going to be trying to get. Um, today, my first one for the day was Greg Baldwin, who plays Uncle Iroh. And I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. Very friendly guy. Talked for a bit. I, I was trying to think about quotes to get from Iroh for it, and... You know, there's so many good ones, and it was hard to pick one. And then he just wrote the Delectable Tea or Deadly Poison one. I really like how that came out. Um, after that, my second one for the day, I went back over and uh, saw Marty Grabstein again. Got my Courage Pop signed in pink paint pen. Turned out real nice. Uh, had to talk a little bit and show a picture, but then he did recall bits about meeting me and Mom back in the summer. So, nice guy. Uh, after that, I picked up this one for my dad, uh, Dono Longu, it's a weird name, um, but he was King Horik on the Vikings TV show, and he was like a DA and some of the newer Law & Order SVU stuff, and my dad's big on Vikings, so his birthday is coming up, so that's a present for him. Um, <clears throat> then we went and ran into Ron, or Rob Paulson. And I got my Carl Weezer poster sign in silver Sharpie. And in the right angles, it pops really good. And some angles, it's a little hidden. But I'm just going to display it somewhere where the light hits it nice at the house. And everything will work out good. You got the, don't forget to finish your croissant, which is mint. So then I realized I really wanted to meet Nick Castle. So I went and I found a Michael Myers Funko Pop on the floor. And uh, went and got that signed. Super nice guy. I do like the Halloween movies. Um, before getting Castle, though, I realized I'd fanboyed so much with Baldwin that I'd completely forgotten to give him one of the White Lotus tokens. So we went back through his line, and I gave him one of the tokens. He was super happy with it. He asked if I had more. You know, I was going to give him as many as he wanted. But he said that he wanted to sign one for me, and he wanted me to sign the one that I gave him. So he signed one of my white lotus tokens so this is a this is definitely a good good memory piece there i'm really happy with it and 
he seemed really impressed with it. So it's always nice to impress someone with my 3D printing talents, I suppose. But tomorrow we're going kind of early and uh, just going to try and get in and get our other autographs. You got anything you want to show off? He's showing off his talent at making noise. There you go. Smile, you're on camera. Goku. That's Goku from anime. It's Goku from anime. Uh, All right. From not the Comic Con. Uh, I think that's Flamia. Oh man, from anime. That's Wheelie. Uh, Luffy, Spiku. Heck yeah. Uh, copyright. Uh, actually, Hamlet probably isn't copyright. Shakespeare. Yeah, I think that's more like public yeah. at this point. It's fire. Yeah. Uh, Miss Minutes kitchen timer. Uh, little teeny tiny little cars. Harry Potter locket. Harry Potter time turner. Kids. Jurassic Park. All right. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the band Weezer was there. Right. Uh, Let's try to get some light yeah. on there. That looks pretty yeah, good. Yeah, the band Weezer. Right. They were in there. Uh, Greg Baldwin. Uh, Greg Baldwin. Yeah, I'm, I'm debating going for one of those. So he had these teacups that he's hand-painted Lotus tokens on and signed. And, uh, and they were a little pricey. They were like 60 bucks, but it's also like art from an actor. Like, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's, you can't put a price on art. If after you buy your autographs and you've got 60 left over, uh, like, comfortably, yeah. Uh, uh, why wouldn't you? Right. Uh, Greg Baldwin, I got the same quote. Mine's in red. What do you do yours in? Mine's in like a silvery white. Uh, he reached for that, and then I saw red, and I was like, ooh, fire. Right. Overall, finally, I fucking finally got him. I nailed him down. I finally got him. Right. Kellen Goff has been dodging me for years at this point. And well, yeah. I got him. Well, yeah, every time you go to meet him, he cancels. Uh, yeah, and I got him. So. I got him. You secured the bag. And now, I gotta do it again, because it took so long to release a new pop of his uh, character. Right. And then, uh, Michael Walker, uh... Some might say the main character of Suicide Squad. Uh, right. And that's kind of a spoiler because the whole point of the Suicide Squad is you don't know what character's going to die or not. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, my, it's weird that they only did his as like a full convention thing and not like as a regular release. Uh, but yeah, wh who I would say is arguably the main character of the Suicide Squad. If you like Michael Walker, definitely check out that movie. Right. I think I'm going to stick with Yondu. Yondu? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be, that's definitely his more iconic role, because he just, because he's got hair, I think. Hair and goggles, he doesn't look like Michael Walker at all. Right. All right, getting ready to go. Final reveal. I think this one turned out pretty good. I don't know who the fuck that is, but this one turned out pretty good. Walking up for Saturday. Lady just tried to double charge us for parking because the hearse is larger than an average vehicle and will take up two spaces, even though it's longer and not wider. Yeah, Thoughts? Yeah. 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 Bullshit. I'm gonna have to pay. I'm gonna have to charge you forty dollars. No, you ain't. It's no bigger than like a big pickup truck. For the first time ever, I just got like recognized by a fan. You should have like, let him be in the. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, no one's ever noticed me before, so that was awesome. You can get the photo from his Instagram. Maybe, yeah. When he follows me, I'll be able to look. So, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, so, uh, I got my autographs waiting on Rooker's photo. Uh, they're doing some shenanigans today. They moved Matt Lanner around and then sent him to his photo ops early, so I was playing a wild goose chase. So, and Rooker didn't show up at opening. He showed up at about 11.30, which was too late for me to not get to my photo op. So first thing I did today was Lanner's photo. Came out real nice. And then I went, I met him. Super nice guy. I'm absolutely happy with how that came out. I love the made a portion with you quote. Then I went 
I got through Rooker's line, and I really like how that came out, kind of like a coppery, silver sharpie kind of thing. <laughs> so, got my autographs for the day, waiting for Rooker's photo op. I lost Aiden. I don't know where Aiden's at, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But uh, I might get some lunch and kill some time, so we'll see how it goes. Finally got a touch of Aiden, and so now we're just waiting for him to show up. Should be along any time. Maybe I'll see, we're talking about getting food, maybe I'll see about making a run to the car to drop some stuff off. But yeah, it's going well so far. So they have this new Starlight Coke, and they've been making a big deal about it, and heard it, about it, it on the radio. It does actually say that it is space flavored. So my guess is that it either tastes like a vacuum, or light rays that have not been diffused by an ozone layer. Meaning I that have tasted it'll either a hurt or it'll hurt. So I have tasted a vacuum, uh, light rays uh, undiffused. That would be a first for me. Right. Dude, don't spoil it. Do not spoil it. It's weird. You know what it tastes like? It's like Coke covered in the powder from Lucky Charms marshmallows. Like, that's the aftertaste. There's regular Coke in there. Right. But then there's something else, and I don't know if I like it. I mean, I don't dislike it. It's different and distinct to regular Coke, more so than I was expecting. Yeah. I'd probably drink it again. I wouldn't replace regular Coke with it, but I would drink it again. I wouldn't uh, replace regular Coke with it. Right. So, uh, I'm, I'm giving it like a 7.5 out of 10. Where, where do you stand on it? I don't typically rate things in these Pensacon videos. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're going to have to like throw like, I don't know, like good, bad, you know? I think it's good, just different. But he's not bad. But I didn't not hate good. it, but I don't think I liked it. I might only grab another bottle of these just to confirm. Like, this is weird and I don't know how I feel about it. Let me try another bottle. Right. So, 
He's undecided. I think it's okay. 7-5 out of 10. Hey guys, it is Sunday morning. Aiden is taking a shower. We're at his place though. Got in at about midnight last night, so we didn't do anything really filming wise. Figure I'll show off the rest of what I got, and I'm gonna later do like a haul segment when I'm home, and then like a separate video just showing about the haul. Um, I only got one thing off the vendor floor today. It was this like time turner. I uh, really happy with it. It was five dollars. It uh, actually was from this like licensed like kit. Comes with stickers and stuff. These little five dollar box kits you used to see. And uh, it's just it's just a nice looking thing. The chain's actually a really nice metal, and the turner itself's plastic, but it's painted nicely to where it doesn't really feel like cheap crap plastic. So, and for five dollars, ultimately you can't you can't bitch. Uh, for Carly, my sister is watching my cats, doing a great job of it, from what I hear. And so, because we are both Avatar Last Airbender fans, I went ahead and picked her up a table photo from Greg Baldwin. I really like the quote he went for, the if you look, the, if you look for the light, you will often find it. And uh, that is a solid Iroh quote, and I think that she'll like it very much. I also didn't get to show them yesterday, just because running, but my Matt Lanner photo op went really well as did my Michael Rooker one. So, <clears throat> got all the photos I could have wanted. I got all the autographs I could have wanted. Ultimately, the lines were not bad. And uh, Now, I have been hearing a lot. We showed up on Saturday, like, stupid early. Like, in like an hour and a half early. And, as I understand, a little while after we made it in, they'd actually reached fire code limits, and there were people waiting outside all day long that never even got to go in. So there's all sorts of social media drama going on. And, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how they do going forward. Um, people have been saying it's time for a new convention center for years in their comment section, myself included. And uh, they, they seem to think that they're perfectly fine where they are, but I've never actually heard of one where people just weren't allowed in legally. So, maybe it's eye-opening, maybe it's Pensacon, and it doesn't matter what happens, they're going to stay there forever. I guess time will tell. Alright, we just rendezvoused with Aiden's clan, and uh, we're driving separate, but we're on the way to Gatorland. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. It's kind of nice out and stuff, so it's a nice day to nice day to go to Gatorland. All right, still on the way to Gatorland, but typically at some point we do talk about our Pensacon experience. I, I overall enjoyed it. This was one of the more enjoyable ones. I don't know if that's you know just by happenstance because we went two days. Right. This is one of the more enjoyable Pensacons. Right. So one thing worth noting is that we made it inside a lot of people did not apparently they had oversold tickets so much that people were waiting outside all day to such an extent that Pensacon offered them free Sunday passes which then is probably going to mean there's extra people on Sunday and, and also Saturday tickets are more expensive than Sunday so they got screwed on that right so I mean at least they get to go in potentially Maybe, but not the Sunday people. Right, yeah, the Sunday people now have to wait. I mean, I don't know that's how they're going to work it. I mean, I guess Sunday's just going to be crowded. So there was a fire marshal going around. I'd actually seen them walking around. I was waiting for them to say clear out because there's too many people, but apparently they just told them to stop letting people in the door. So there was people waiting outside for people to leave to then be allowed in a couple at a time, and it was just a pretty overall extremely, you know, like, over-busy situation. And we did not get screwed over. We did everything we wanted to do. My Michael Rooker photo op was like an hour and a half late, which then push a, that pushed our leave time back by two hours, because even though we did go and get in Greg Baldwin's line later for another trip through, we could have done it two hours sooner had it not been for the photo op being pushed back two hours. So, and you know, it did mess up scheduling there. As I understand it, near the end of the day, it was like two and a half hours late. I just progressively kept stacking. I don't know what they did for the photo ops that were supposed to be later in the day, but I'm sure a lot of people got screwed over on it. But the, the, the whole point of pre-sale tickets in my book is just like a concert. You know, you can sell out. They need to know the fire code says this many people in the building and then pre-sale that many tickets. If you're only allowed to have 800 in as a hypothetical number, 
they they do not sell that 801st and beyond ticket, you know. If you sell out online, so be it. If you want to have some available at the door, only put limited quantities online. That's why you have online ticket sales. And also, if you buy online, you wait in a longer line than if you were buying at the door. That the was... buy tickets at the door line was a lot shorter than the will call line, and that doesn't make any sense. That's yeah. not how that should work. Now, any other convention... People who prepay tickets should get special treatment because that's why you prepay tickets. Yeah, the prepaying... That is the literal reason. The prepaying ticket system is supposed to make it easier. Any other convention I've been to, if you have to buy your ticket at the door, you go get in a special line, and then you go get in the line to go in. Yeah. Everywhere else just scans your ticket and then lets you right in the door. Yeah. In some places, when you prepay online, you they mail you the pass, so you just walk straight in. Right. So, I don't really know why they decide to do a will call line and then a separate entry line. Just let me walk in the door that's right behind the person that's scanning my ticket and will call. It's not that deep. But, however, it's what it is. But I think going forward, personally... Now, I had some conflict on social media with a Pensacon admin a, a while back. It got resolved. I'll do that on a separate video on my haul video. I'll go into detail on that. I was going into this anticipating it potentially being the last time I go. With it being as big an issue as it was for so many people and apparently it's getting bigger and these things don't tend to shrink I'm on board with being very tentative about future Pensacons it's always been guest dependent but now it's going to be picky everyone that I met today does other conventions or everyone that I met this weekend there's no one that was there that I've not seen on other convention rosters Michael Rooker is going to be in one in Cleveland that I'm going to be at in a few months Matt Lander gets all over the place uh, Kirsch Cowardly Dog I'd already met. You know, Nick Castle's going to be at one in Pittsburgh later this year. Um, the only one that was kind of odd was the one I got from my dad, the Dono Love You guy. But, I mean, everyone that we met does conventions regularly. Or I've seen him somewhere else. Right. So knowing that there are just issues with how they arrange and set things up, I'm going to say it's very tentative going forward. Like, and also, like, next year, we're just more likely to get screwed over. Right, because the people... Not smaller. Right, and the people that got stuck outside might decide to show up earlier next year, which means we need to show up even earlier than we did this year, which was an hour before doors open. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, going forward, if the only people that I see that are going there are people that I know I can meet elsewhere, I'm probably going to be less interested what's going to get me going forward is probably like a doctor or like a major Star Wars guest. And that's kind of where I'm at. Where are you on? Uh, I'm good to go or not to go. I will have more enjoyment, uh, I think, at other cons. Right. This has just been in the past, historically, a good one to go to. Right. And admittedly, it's we had a great... Guess, mostly for the guests. Right. Admittedly, we had a great time. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting here like it was this bad. This is one of the more enjoyable ones. Right. No, I, I would almost argue that this was the best one. Yeah. But that was just our experience, and apparently our experience was the not common experience this go-around. Especially this go-around. Yeah, like in particular, more people had bad time than good time. So, I'm just going to very tentatively proceed going forward. But, yeah, that's kind of... And especially next year will be their 10th anniversary. That's going to be huge. Potentially. They have to have the... My thing is, if it's a 10th anniversary, they're probably going to try and make a big deal and get even bigger guests, which will mean more people. Yeah. But the, but the convention center's not going to grow. They also, this is, they said, this is more guests than they've ever had. They right. Have guests in some of the food areas. Yeah. I mean, smaller ones, people that wouldn't really have a big line. But, you know, it was just, I don't know. It, it was just weird how they arranged it. Remember and they last really. Year they started hiding some in the basement, couldn't find them for hours. Well, I, they actually had some down there. That was where Matt Lander was going to be. Um, I think it's just a room that we've just never had to go to before. And, um, but I mean, it was it was easy to find once we knew that it existed. But yeah, I mean, it was just a, it was just kind of a whole fiasco for a lot of people. And the big thing is going forward, they just need to limit their ticket sales. If you have a fire marshal telling you you can't have this many people in the building, that's probably the amount of people that you should not sell more than that amount of tickets to. And the fire marshal's telling you you can't have any more. You're already way overcrowded. 
Right. And, I mean, it was crowded to begin with before in prior years. And this year, a fire marshal shows up. It, it's nice that it's growing. As a business, I understand you want it to grow. But when you exceed your building, you exceed your building. You either get a new building or you sell no more tickets than you, your fire code can permit. Do a flip. 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 Yo. Can you do a flip? What's up, little guy? Do a flip. You're my new best friend now. I made a friend. Yeah, raccoons was a highlight so far. Um, fuck the gators. Uh, yeah, I just fed raccoons and they were adorable. They uh, that that was the one, that was the one to go for. I should probably just go and give them the rest of my gator food, actually. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yo. Do a flip. Yeah. No one's done a flip for me yet, but we'll find someone. This is just like the vibe. I don't know. I like it. Do you like it? It do in fact be vibe. Yeah. That's a hey. baby raccoon. Hey. I got some food for you. I'm gonna set it over there, not in the water, okay? Watch it. It's all for you. Oh my gosh. You better watch it. You better watch it so you can eat it, man. Yep. Oh, okay. Bye. I love you. Do a flip. Nice. Can I try and get the other one? Oh, that guy's running for it. Yeah, he is. Oh, man. That bird got it. I tried to. Damn. I got right behind that gator moving. And now that gator is coming towards it. All right, we're getting one. Dude, he's going for it. Hell yeah, he knows what he wants. Woo! That was me. Dude, look over there. That guy was trying to get up and failed. Well, dumb bitch. You can still see my first one floating out there in the middle. Yeah. I don't think anyone's getting that pellet. No. You wasted it. You dumb shit. You wasted it. Yeah. You only had one go and you wasted it. I had two goes. Yeah. Because you, you wasted it. He's going. Oh, man. He figured it out. We had to restock on gator food. We were basically at, well, we were definitely out. But uh, we found a good place to throw it to him after it was all gone, so we each got two more bags. There we go. This is a good investment. Yo, that bird's on a gator. Right.
Oh man, the gator that keeps hanging out with that bird is a smart one. Hell yeah. I just threw my last treat. That same, I just said what I said before you started recording. Woo! Do a flip. Look at that stupid crocodile over there. Alligators are better. It's in there with mouth open. Do a flip. Hey, do a flip. All right, we've left Gatorland. It was pretty fun. I had fun. Aiden, fun. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. It was good fun. fun. Uh, no animals did a flip. Zero out of ten. I'm never fucking going back. Uh, unlikely to do so either. So, anyway, and uh, no animals flipped. The raccoons were cute as hell. I've always liked raccoons. Maybe I'm biased. Um, Racist. Right, yeah. But, uh, anyway, we are going to Gator Joe's, unaffiliated. It is a beach bar, a, an inland lake beach bar. I actually worked there for like a year and a half in high school. It was really cool. And I just try to stop every time I come down. So, yeah, let's go do that. Alright, Gator Joe's is good, and we're gonna do some figure hunting. We're hitting up a Walmart, just cause it was on the way, but we might try and see what we can turn up at Target down the road later. Um, kinda looking for some of those carbonized black series that are starting to show up early, so see how that goes. And anything at Walmart I wanted, I got a shirt that I needed, but we're at Target now, so let's see what we can turn up here. Alright, we're into Monday, last day, and uh, I gotta be at the airport by 5, it's like or like 4 30 5 o'clock it's like noon now and we're just gonna go kick around a mall maybe find some you know collectibles or just different things never know what it'll be supposedly there's a jurassic park store opening up which would be cool to just look at so that is in the cards but otherwise that's pretty well pretty well what we're up to today <laughs> Thing. Uh, we might go try and find someone at the office, but we think we figured out what it is. There's a Jurassic Park arcade machine, like in the middle, which would explain why there's no location on the map. So, we're gonna play. Alright, so, the Jurassic Park store pretty well was a bust in that there was no store. Didn't really find anything too cool at the mall. GameStop had some Book of Boba Fett uh, repainted Boba helmets, but I, I can't do that with a plane coming up. Um, we're talking about looking for some food, and there's a Walmart and a Target. Um, still hoping to maybe find that carbonized Shore Trooper Target exclusive that's kind of falling all over the place. We're about two hours from Tampa, and there was a found sighting in Tampa. Not that we're going to go to Tampa, but it just means that it's like in the region, probably same distribution center. So, you know, just see what happens. Alright, so we're at Target, and they didn't have it on the shelf, but I asked about the credit, or the carbonized uh, Scout Trooper, and the guy actually looked and said that they are, like, here, but in the back, so he just went to look for us, so hopefully we'll end up scoring. Alright, we had a successful mission, got the carbonized Scout Trooper, looks pretty good, not crazy big about the shiny metallic effect on the fabric bits, but it's alright for now, I suppose, so... Super cool stuff. I dig it. We're going to go hit up Walmart just for funsies. But yeah, this was this was a good find. So it's, it's Monday. We're getting ready to go to the airport. But I figured I'd show off because we never did a proper haul. 
but Aiden's Michael Rooker photo op or autograph from Saturday ended up going there, and then he picked up this really cool Stargate portal, and he bought a blind bandit hen from Toph. Looked looked pretty pretty swaggy tastical. Oh, yeah. She finally got to meet you. Yeah, she did. She uh, came to my booth and she got to meet me. Oh right, that's yeah, that's how you that was it. that was exactly it. You definitely didn't mail that in instead of meet her. Yeah. No, I just said I met her. Yeah. Farewell. Thank you. Yeah, see you next year. See you next year. And then there was one. Been here for a little over an hour. Got about another hour and a half till boarding. Bought some headphones, been watching some Clone Wars, but yep, just winding down. And I'm gonna miss not seeing snow soon. Get to Charlotte, got my bag in good time, and we're doing real good. Just gotta get up my gate and see it up ahead. Got a good time though. All right, we are back. We are in Ohio. I got picked up. I got taken to my parents' house where the van is. So, finally, back in some familiar territory. And I'm home. Thanks for watching HCR Goes Pensacon Volume 2, everybody. Will there be a Volume 3? Probably not. Uh, good convention overall. Uh, probably going to end up going back, but I'm going to mix it up. You know, this is Volume 2. Uh, next one's probably going to be HCR Goes Pensacon the third. That's a potential. So we'll we'll see how things go next time. But I need to go inspect all my autographs, make sure everything arrived undamaged. I did an impeccable packing job, but I did watch the American Airlines guy drop some suitcases as they were pulling them out of the valet check. So we're going to inspect. So. Thanks for watching HCR Goes Pensacon. I will catch y'all on another video. And later on this week, there will be a skimped down haul video. So we'll see you then. Bye.